members of Grace for uh, about six years, and uh, we've been in regular attendance since 2005. That Sunday, uh, we, we go to early service, and, uh, and it was choir night's uh, day, so Sarah was uh, actually staying for both services, but our middle daughter, Rebecca, uh, was uh, home with two friends from college, and so after church, we took them for a quick ride to show them uh, the best view of Peoria, and then went home and started doing Sunday dinner, and we were watching uh, listening to TV and uh, all our phones went off at the same time to give us this warning and of course we get a lot of warnings and watches and we kind of joked about it and uh, but we said we'd be a little bit more attentive and and the the two girls are both from California so they've never even heard of a tornado warning or a watch and and so we were kind of intentionally just making a point of playing down the whole Okay, you know, we get a lot of watches. A tornado's really narrow, and the chances of it ever hitting uh, us are so minute, you don't need to worry about it. And then, then we were watching the news, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the broadcast lady all of a sudden is announcing she needs to get off the air and run downstairs, and they're getting a little bit nervous, and uh, we're still figuring it's a long way off. Don't worry about it. Uh, I went upstairs to change, and uh, at that point, Brenda and the girls decided it was time to go in the basement. And I, as I came down, I, it was the first time in my life I, I heard that sound that they talk about with the tornado, that uh, like a locomotive or a bunch of diesel engines running together. And, and so I, I, I came downstairs, looked out the window, and I, I couldn't actually see the tornado. What I could see was a, wa a wall of swirling dust coming probably a couple blocks away from the house is all. It was, it was just right on top of us, too, too close to get it, a sense of how wide it was. And uh, so uh, I yelled, we need to get downstairs now, but they were already downstairs. I tried to grab our dog and uh, get him to come down, but when you... When people get real excited, animals get scared, and he kind of jogged away into the, the, the dining room. And so uh, uh, after that, I ran downstairs. By the time I got to the bottom steps, uh, you could hear it hitting our house already. And uh, I just kind of laid over the Brenda and the girls and uh, listened to them praying because they were all very faithfully praying at that point. And you just, you just, first you heard a lot of sheet metal clashing around and, and then you heard other things banging and then there was this large boom, which we think was the refrigerator getting picked up and dropped down and, uh, and the house falling over. And, and then all of a sudden water fell on all of us from all the pipes that broke and it was quiet. And just that quickly it went from you know, all this terror to just very quiet. I pulled off all the stuff in, uh, at the stairs uh, that were blocking our exit and made a large enough hole that the girls could get up and then we could uh, kind of push and pull Brenda out through the, the hole because we had to go about four foot. And we were, we were fortunate the, uh, the entrance door actually fell on our on top of our stairs and so it prevented a lot of debris from falling down and then you know just everywhere you looked you you, you didn't have any sense of orientation you couldn't tell where your property was where anybody's property was all you it was all flat and, and debris and, and uh, you had a lot all the smoke alarms uh, were going off and every, everywhere and so you had that beeping sound I still think that freaks out uh, uh, Brenda and, and the kids and, and, and the dog a lot now <laughs> when he hears the beeping of a smoke alarm. But, uh, but it was, you know, again, it was just a simple breeze and it was actually sunny. And, uh, but you didn't know what to do. And you, you were in shock at that point and there was no other way to put it. You were just in shock. And, you know, you could just see it. Uh, people grabbing things that didn't make sense, people just kind of walking around trying to figure out. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Brenda was very clear to everybody, you bring down your purse, your computer bag, and your shoes. And so they all had their purses and their computer bags and their shoes, 
and I was down there barefoot because I was still trying to change and and so we had to find a pair of shoes and my neighbors gave me a pair of shoes and and so we could kind of get out of the neighborhood we went back and looked for our dog and uh, and uh, a miracle in of itself is uh, he was he must have come back to the door after he realized I wasn't chasing him and couldn't get in and and uh, by our counter we had three oak stools and he must have laid there and literally there was a small tent of debris on either side with a whole, with the rest of the house on top of it and we could pull him out and uh, he had one small cut and uh, and got him out too so I remember distinctly they told us at the beginning of 8:30 service you know if there is a tornado warning you're supposed to everyone get up go immediately down to the basement and I remember looking at the other girls in my section and I laughed. I was like, that's not going to happen. And it did happen during 11 o'clock service. And I was sitting in the choir loft and I kept hearing this voice. And I was like, girls, do you hear that? Do you hear that random voice? And it was the, like the alarm system telling everyone to go in the basement. And so we all went in the basement. Um, I found some friends and we we're sitting there. And then they announced that so-and-so's house got hit in Washington. And I looked at my friend and I was like, I live in Washington, and um, he immediately went and asked the guy, like, do you know where this lady's house was? And the guy didn't know, but they immediately, like, sent me kind of into panic mode, and I, as soon as I could get upstairs, I tried calling everyone, and no one was picking up, so I tried a ton just calling everyone. We turned on the radio station, it was announcing that it hit from Kruger to Main Street, and I, I called my brother, and I said, Matt, they said Kruger to Main Street, like that is our neighborhood. We say that our experience is, uh, you know, in the midst of all the storm, it was uh, it, there was a whole series of blessings that came out of it. Uh, um, you know, number one, everybody was safe. No one was hurt at all. And, and that, that was a blessing when you think of where our neighborhood looked. Um, but uh, beyond that, uh, you know, we had found out um, less than six weeks or so uh, earlier that Brenda had metastatic cancer and, uh, and uh, she was pretty weak at the time. Uh, we were talking about how we were going to have to uh, make changes to our house to accommodate her not being able to go up the stairs anymore because uh, she, she could do the stairs once a day and that was it. And, uh, and so we were figuring out how to manage all those things. and. Uh, and and here uh, they kind of got managed for us. They, uh, everything just kind of uh, uh, literally fell in place. We we went. Uh, we chose not to rebuild. We we were able to uh, to come to uh, Peoria, be closer to the doctors. Uh, we were able to found a house that was everything was we needed was on one floor, and we were able to get in a lot uh, sooner than. Uh, we would have had we uh, chose to rebuild. And we, uh, we avoided all the stress, uh, well, most of the stress that went through rebuilding because, you know, that's, that's a stressful time in anyone's life, let alone when you're, everybody in the whole neighborhood's rushing to find builders and, and get it all figured out. So, you know, it, it just all was arranged. Doors were open when they needed to be opened. Uh, uh, we don't wish a tornado on anybody, but for us, uh, it ended up being a series of blessings, and uh, and again, uh, the friends and the church and the school were so supportive throughout it. You really realize how blessed you are. Immediately, as soon as I found out, like all my church friends were texting me saying, "Like, what do you need? What do you need? Can I do anything? Even the smallest thing?" And I think that was probably the biggest blessing and the biggest help throughout everything, because people automatically wanted to give you clothes right off their backs. They they wanted to bring you meals, they want to do all this stuff for you, and I think that's amazing. We purchased the home in, in March. We, uh, we had a lot of work. This was, house was, uh, I had been uh, empty for about two years. Uh, it had been foreclosed on. The roof leaked, a bunch of flooring needed to be replaced. So we, after about uh, 10 weeks of work, we were able to, to move in and, and then wait for the different pieces of furniture to slowly flow in and, and get going. So we were in, in May, in the middle of May, 
and, uh, and it's just been a very comfortable place to be. It settled our family in a lot quicker. I think throughout this experience, prayers have been the most important thing for us, and, uh, and, and that's still something that uh, we cherish and appreciate. Uh, in fact, we, we pray for all those who pray for us because we know it's such a blessing. And uh, we, uh, we still have Brenda's situation to deal with, and uh, that's probably our biggest, biggest phase right now. I have the Bible my grandfather gave me when I was 14 years old. Uh, it was uh, normally on the nightstand up in our room, and literally nothing from our bedroom survived. So, but I brought it downstairs that day and had it in the in the kitchen. So, uh, it actually did 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 make the trip. It's uh, it's still got a lot of grit in it. Yeah, it's kind of hard with these very thin pages that they published the NFV on that back then uh, to get them all out but uh, it hit you know it has uh, the Bible verse my grandfather left for me or wrote in it and uh, so that's my treasure from the tornado. In our bedroom was our wedding album and like Gwen said there was nothing found from our from our bedroom at all. The girls' bedroom had dropped into the garage area and they were able to salvage a few things but what I didn't know is my son Matthew and my friend Sue Fifield had found pages from my wedding album. And Sue has a, a niece who redigitizes and puts photos back together. And you, you can't see from the photos here, but a lot of them were in small pieces and she put them together. And then right after we moved into the house here, she brought a little housewarming gift and there she presented me with all my pictures and a CD of everything that had been re redigitized and I just lost it because those were really really special to me and then shortly after that they were going through my salvage again and Matthew came across my little metal box of recipes and my mom had typewritten out all our family favorites and we were able to pry it open with a crowbar but I have my recipes not my recipe box but just have those special things that were just your family mementos your family memories just your special things so um, I just feel abundantly blessed that I was able to to retrieve those items. This is this little dog I've had since how long? Two or three. I've had it forever, honestly. Um, I made it. At, wasn't Build a Bear, one of the old places in town, but literally have slept with it for years. And I remember when it hit, I looked at my parents and I said, "I I need Casey. I will not be able to sleep without him." And my room and my sister's room, basically the walls collapsed in and it dropped. So when we found my room, we were able to push the walls off and there was my whole bedroom. Um, just perfect there. My bed was still halfway made. Um, <laughs> my desk was still there. My dresser was still there. But um, So we weren't allowed to exactly go in there quite yet, but my uncle just dove in between one of the cracks and got it for me. And so we watched it and I was able to sleep with it. And it's just awesome. There's there's literally a picture of me just holding it and crying because it was a really big deal for me. I do really truly believe that one of our biggest blessings has been through my breast cancer journey and through the losses that we had during the tornado was our church family. The way that it came alongside us, before us and behind us, they were able to help in our, in our friends as well. We had church friends and school friends and small group friends. They were able to anticipate our needs before we even knew what we needed. Um, they identified additional needs along the way. Um, it was humbling. Sometimes it was hard to, to take the help. And then Pastor Cordes took me aside and a couple times he came to visit us, to minister to us. And, and he said to me, Brenda, you have to remember that you cannot take away the joy of the giver away from those that want to help and bless you. And that was convicting to me. And I realized I wasn't double dipping from the, from the breast cancer to the, to the tornado. Um, we were just abundantly blessed with, with our family and our friends and our church friends and everyone who wanted to reach out and bless us. And through this whole journey, God has shown us what's essential. We have focused on things that were essential and the things that are eternal and a lot of the things that we lost is just stuff. It was clutter that just got in the way 
of in real real life relationships and the things that we want to be able to be a part of when it comes to ministry and discipleship and just just being a family so for us I think I can say for us that this this whole experience has been a blessing it's been life-changing faith building and it has been family strengthening we do give God the glory for all he has done for us